Welcome back. You're watching Velshine Rule with midterms now officially behind us. It is tempting to dig into the results for a deeper meaning. And our friend John Harwood, who I have not seen in ages, I'm thrilled he's back from CNBC, did just that. Using new calculations from the Brookings Institution, Harwood says we see a drastic divide between Republicans and Democrats in terms of the American economy. Republicans represent a smaller, fading segment of the population reliant on traditional manufacturing, agriculture, and resource extraction. And Democrats represent the larger growing economy fueled by finance, professional services, and digital innovation in diverse urban areas. Joining me now, CNBC's editor-at-large, John Harwood. John, first, we got to get right into that with Republicans. Traditional manufacturing, agriculture, and resource extraction. The first issue there is many of those industries have been optimized to need less workers. There's no bringing the jobs back. The jobs don't need to exist because of advancements in technology. Well, advancements in technology and also declining demand for some of the services. Take a coal country, for example. President Trump talked about bringing back the coal industry. Well, that hasn't happened. It isn't going to happen for both economic and environmental reasons. And so what you have here is the... Uh, economic manifestation of the cultural divide we have in the country. Uh, higher levels of education, higher levels of income, uh, higher levels of diversity in the democratic areas, uh, older, less educated whites dominating in the Republican-led areas. And uh, you saw that uh, in the 2016 presidential election. Hillary Clinton only carried okay. uh, fewer then than 500 counties. Uh, Donald Trump carried 2,500, but her counties accounted for two-thirds of the gross domestic product in the economy. Then is this just a continuation of the economy we saw in the 2016 election, sort of a tale of two economies, and the first in 2016 elected Donald Trump? Yes. They're drifting further apart, though, and the future is on the side of the democratic economy. And, the, and in fact, the uh, rest of the country uh, should be hoping for the success of that economy because that's going to be necessary to pay for uh, government services, entitlement benefits, and all that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Brookings Institution, the Metropolitan Policy Program, Mark Moreau and Jacob Witten have done this incredible research uh, on uh, exactly where growth is coming and where the booming parts of the economy are coming, but they've also got a new paper out uh, to try to figure out ways to bring the two closer together, to unite the country, to okay, bring then behind what's the some of those that? lagging rural uh, then, areas. Then give us the answer to that, or what did they come up with? Because as divided as the country is, and you're saying it's growing more divided, we're not really dissimilar, because all of those people on each side of the aisle, politics isn't their priority. Supporting their families and living their best life is. Absolutely. And what, what this new paper just out today from Brookings shows uh, is that it's possible to target some smaller communities for uh, infrastructure investments, for educational investments, uh, for job training investments, and br have those bring up the surrounding rural economies. Again, uh, this divergence, which tracks the income inequality that uh, has characterized the American economy for 40 years, uh, these are this is experimentation that they're calling for. Don't know whether it's going to be successful, but uh, if you can target some of that to uh, geographic places, that's their argument, but also make it easier for people to move to where jobs are, have some subsidies for relocation. Those are ways in which they argue that we can uh, bridge this gap, which is only getting wider and is now both economic, cultural, and political at the same time. It's time to bridge the gap, John. Just takes will and courage. John, thank you so much. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.